got my guy Baron Davis. B. Diddy. Hold on, man. So let's get into this. So we're gonna we're gonna have a couple different segments in this in this conversation. The first segment is uh, we're gonna ask you questions, and they're all related to credit. First question is a, is a true or false? So you got a 50-50 chance on this. Um, the higher your income, the better your credit score. That's false. Yes. That is false, ladies and gentlemen. Because I got um, bad credit now. Speaking <laughs> <laughs> from experience. <laughs> yes, that is false. You know, just because somebody makes a lot of money doesn't necessarily mean they have the best credit. True or false? An excellent credit profile can translate into big financial savings. I guess. <laughs> Wait, hold on. <laughs> Ask the question again. Right. That's a trick question, bro. Uh, true. He said true. I don't know. I just no, I say false. You're I saying say false. false. Yeah. Well, I'm going to take the true answer that you said the second time because it's true. Why? Good credit can help you qualify for better interest rates and terms on everything from credit cards to car loans to mortgage to business loans. Right? So if you have a good credit profile, you'll get a better interest rate. Yeah, you rate can get, yeah. On okay, a lot of those things. All right. Multiple choice. Uh, which of the following helps your credit score? A on-time bill payments, B, a long and diverse credit history, C, using less than 30% of your credit limit, D, all of the above. D, all of the above. Yes. 30%? Yes, sir. This is how you get good credit. You've been out the league for some time now, so tell us about your approach to budgeting uh, when you were in the league versus how you approach budgeting now. What's changed? Uh, were there any positive behaviors that you practiced then or negative ones that you practiced that you got rid of? Uh, I would say when I was in the league, it was uh, my life was super, super simplified. And so for me, it was like thinking about my budget should fit my routine. So I spent a lot of money on CDs, movies, <laughs> <laughs> movie tickets, you know, and clothes. But I would think, you know, my routine was just so geared on basketball. And I, and I always say this to basketball players, and it, and it puts – me back on track even now that I have companies and payroll and rent and employees and all kind of stuff I don't want to deal with. And so anytime that I get kind of besides myself now as a retired athlete, I got to get back to my basketball routine. I would say now on the budgeting side, it's just you have to be extremely, extremely organized between your personal, your business, right? and then whatever family leisure miscellaneous and you have to create hard numbers you know what i mean when i was younger it was like all right i got a little soft buffer but you have to create hard numbers and as you get older you have to start deleting people off of your running show if you could go back 10 15 years um what would you tell yourself as it relates to finances like what would you tell your younger self as it relates to, to dealing with money so I would probably just teach the younger Baron Davis that where you're going to get to is really in, it's all about the space that you're in. Learn basketball, learn the people around you. If you want to be in finance, there's a finance person that works for the team. If you want to be in marketing and media, there are all these people around you. So I would, I would more so program the younger version of myself to be um, – Focus on developing relationships. Relationships. What do you think that we can do better to educate new players and fans about credit? Uh, credit games, credit trivia, credit rewards. Mm -hmm. I feel like the best way to educate is to gamify, right? And for athletes, we learn by making a mistake, correcting a mistake, then being successful. But we have to learn in real time. So this is the final segment. And so we heard what you said, and uh, we'll take a synopsis of it and give you the feedback on what we think about the answers are, uh, from our interpretation. So uh, what I got from Baron is that you always have to develop relationships, right? I feel like getting to know you now, we're in a lot of the same circles, mm -hmm. and all of those circles are relationship-based, but it really is who you know. Right. And not just who you know, but actually developing real relationships with those people. So it doesn't necessarily have to be the highest ranking relationship. You don't have to have Barack Obama's phone number, but your next door neighbor could change your life. That's a fact. Give yeah. me important. I, I think a couple of things I took away from it. Uh, number one being the most important person in your financial freedom is you. 
people always ask me what's my favorite financial advice and I always say it's plan for the future because you're gonna be older a lot longer than you're gonna be younger yeah but I'm looking at what's gonna look like in 10 to 15 years right and that's gonna be a lot different the money's gonna slow down but I need to sustain my lifestyle I need to create and so you were looking at the future while you were in the present and so I think that's something that a lot of NBA and a lot of athletes really should really take heed to so that's one of those things I'm like and he's really living in Byron. So we appreciate you coming. It's been great. Thank you all. <laughs> Make some noise for the legendary Baron Davis.